Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and I am super excited about a very short but very important message I have here for you today on this episode. And if you're here at the Heal Your Hunger Show for the first time, welcome, glad you're here. So glad that you've joined us. The Heal Your Hunger Show is all about finding new ways to be with food that don't include turning to food for boredom and worry and entertainment and companionship. (laughs) So, you know, if you're used to leaning on food for emotional reasons, let's turn that ship around, shall we? Because guess what? If you're emotionally eating, it's going to be really hard to meet your goals around health because usually it's not celery sticks and lettuce that we emotionally eat on. It's sugar and carbs and ooey gooey chewy foods that wreck our health, that make us gain weight, that make it hard to lose weight, that give us gut issues and autoimmune issues. And the list goes on and on. Heart disease, diabetes, right? So uh, what I want to do is share with you ways that you can live more effectively and without dependence on food. Let's cut the cord with food being your go-to for everything. Shall we? Okay. I'm excited. This is what we're going to do tonight. This is what we're going to talk about here. Um, So I want to just remind you that a lot goes on in the secret sauce group. We want to invite you to be a part of the secret sauce group on Facebook, go to secret sauce to end emotional eating. And uh, we'll let you in because we want you there. And also, if you, if this idea of emotional eating is new to you, I want to invite you to take the emotional eating quiz, which is on my website, healyourhunger.com. Go to the uh, healyourhunger.com website and right there front and center is a quiz and it'll help you determine if you're an emotional eater or a food addict or somewhere in between. Take the quiz, get your personalized score, find out where you are on the emotional eating spectrum. Okay. And last but not least, if you have not determined what you're going to do in uh, the new year uh, around really uh, stopping dieting, but reaching your health goals, reach out. We want to talk to you. We're happy to talk with you. Um, Right now I'm offering emotional eating breakthrough sessions. I'm talking to people about their health goals and uh, how Heal Your Hunger can help. If you want to explore that, um, you know, and have a conversation, definitely go to healyourhunger.com and register right now. Right now they're free emotional eating breakthrough session. Okay. So on with the show, this is going to be short and sweet, but I really want to share, uh, something that's really important. I shared this, uh, it, during my, uh, holiday hacks class, and I just thought it was so important that I wanted to share it here on my podcast. It's three secrets to maintaining harmony with family members, because Lord knows at holiday time, that's not so easy. So three things, super simple, super quick, and super effective. So my first uh, tip for uh, having harmony around family members, and this has been my number one best way to not be resentful, to not be, you know, hating on my family, to not be judging my family, to not be feeling frustrated and pissed off and sad and lonely and dejected by my family. (laughs) All the above can be healed with this one thing. You ready? Stop wishing for them to be different than they are. Accept them as they are. Do not try to change them. This is your secret to peace and harmony with family members. Think about it. So much of our pain, so much of our stress around family is wishing they would be different, right? And we're doing it. This We're causing the stress. We are wishing they would not do X, wishing they would be more Y. And while that's all well and good, it's probably not going to happen. So you're wishing, you're having the expectation and then having that expectation dashed 
time and time again is causing your distress and frustration and resentment. You know, the best thing I ever did was accept my mother the way she is. And she's not bad. She's a sweetheart, but she ain't perfect either. <laughs> so there were some things about her that drove me nuts. And my unhappiness didn't come from her being that way. My unhappiness primarily came from the fact that I wanted her to be different. And I focused on why can't she be more present? Why can't she be deeper and have more meaningful conversations with me? Why can't she be more, you know, whatever, like my friends, mothers, whatever. There's so many different things I just thought she should be. Poor mom, right? I didn't let her just be her. I was trying to make her into somebody else, wishing she were somebody else. And that caused me misery. So when I thought, you know, you know what? It finally dawned on me. My mom is the way she is, and she's probably not going to change. You know, she's in her eighties now. She's definitely probably not going to change. But for years now, I've just been like, that's mom. That's how mom does mom, you know? And, and when I see it that way, I can let her off the hook. I can enjoy her and her beautiful qualities that are beautiful, you know, and appreciate her the way she is without any attachment to her being different. So try it. This holiday season, try to just let your parents, let your siblings be who they are, you know, bless them, bless them, you know, let them go, let them be them. You know, of course you'd like it if they were different. Of course you'd like it if they understood you. Of course you'd like it if they were more compassionate and loving and giving and generous and, you know, and, and present and, and sober and whatever it is. I'm not saying this is easy friends, but do your best to just know that they're doing the best they can to be them. Stop trying to change them. And much of your suffering will abate. Okay, that's what we're, we're talking about. We're trying to find peace with our family members, harmony with their family members, letting them be them, being detached from how they are. Hey, don't stand in the way of, you know, don't be in the line of fire of insults or injuries. I'm not saying that. Don't take, don't take crap from them. You know, sidestep that, you know, at anything that's hurtful to you. Um, but if you do have somebody in your life who's grumpy and, and critical, you know, as best as you can just bless them and know that's them. And they're probably not very happy on the inside if they have to be so negative. Okay. So try to release them with love. The second thing in terms of creating harmony with your family members is to give to them. Don't try to get from them. This is one of the most powerful things I ever did. And again, I did it with my mom. It was so helpful. Instead of trying her to get her to be a certain way for me, for me to make me feel good, I just let her off the hook and I started giving to her. How can I give to my mom? How can I make my mom feel loved? You know, at some point in our lives, we have to stop being children. <laughs> at what age would it be appropriate to be an adult? And with our parents, they're just people. They're just people. So I want you to think about turning, you know, turning the tide of being a resentful child, you know, like wishing for what you didn't have, being upset that you didn't have the childhood you should have had. I get it. You should have had it different. You know, if you had abuse, if you had um, addiction, if you had abandonment, of course it should have been different, but it wasn't. And the sooner we can accept that, I'm not saying this is easy stuff, friends, okay? But this was what helped me is to stop being a child and start being an adult with them and treating them like just another adult, somebody who wants love. You know, I started giving love to my mama, you know, just loving her. I do everything I can to try to, I mean, I'm sure I could do more. Yes, I could do more, but I, my focus is on loving her and making her feel my love. I want my mom to feel loved. I don't want her to feel like I am disappointed in her. You know, she's a person. She's not my mother anymore. She's a person with feelings. So I try to treat her that way. Somebody who wants, she wants love. She wants to be affirmed, you know, and I, I want her in the, the last, you know, decade or two decades of her life. I want her 
to feel like I approve of her. We all want approval, right? Why not our parents? I'm not saying if they have inappropriate behavior that you should approve of their behavior. Again, you want to be safe with people who are unsafe. You know, you might have to remove yourself. So love them long distance, love them long distance. But the point is with our parents, at some point, we just have to be thinking about loving them. And, and that way it actually protects us. Okay. This is how I've been protected from disappointment, from resentment, you know, from dashed expectations is just to focus on giving out, love out. Okay. The last thing for creating harmony with family members, and this goes along the lines of giving to them, is to ask them questions, listen to them, be present with them. You know, there's a saying, whatever you want in your life, give that to others. Whatever you want, give some away. And if you want attention, if you want somebody to see you, see somebody else, see them, see the people you want to be seen by. Again, it's, it's hard to change people and it's, it'll create a lot of headache if you try. So work on giving to others what you want for yourself. And, and one of the ways we can do this is to listen and be present to people for, with people. And I honestly, I need to hear this. Like I'm talking, I'm talking to myself here. This is something I could do more of. Be present with people, listen to people, ask them questions, get curious. But this will create harmony with in-laws because everybody wants this. Everybody wants this. So when you go hang out with family, instead of thinking about what you can get, think about what you can give. Instead of wanting attention from them, give attention to them, you know, and accept them the way they are. Because isn't that what we want? Don't we want to be unconditionally loved? Don't we, we want people to not judge us and accept us as we are? I promise you, this is the fastest route to peace and harmony with your family members. So I hope this is helpful. I challenge you to try it. I challenge you to try it. Okay. So that's my message. Short and sweet. Happy holidays. Enjoy yourself. Don't hurt yourself with food. Be with the people. Get into the lives and hearts of others instead of thinking about the food. <laughs> okay. Sending you so much love. Take care. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.